Greetings, Reggie Middleton. This video is different from practically all the others. Um, I've gotten quite a few requests from um, retail buyers of Very. Um, they are upset, disturbed, understandably so, um, by all the FUD going on in the crypto sphere. That's fear, uncertainty, uncertainty, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Um, spread by either those who have an agenda or those who seriously don't seem to understand um, what our business model is. We have an institutional bent and we go after institutional clients and um, we want to go after retail clients, but retail clients are a little further down um, the pike in terms of business planning. With that being said, normally uh, the in interpretations and impressions of retail clients or prospective retail clients aren't as important. Um, but it is time to put a stop to a lot of this FUD, um, this nonsense. Some of it slanderous and libelous, other, others or uh, other portions of it probably simply ignorance or unfortunately, you know, an ulterior motive. But with all that being said, instead of me dealing directly with the purveyors of FUD, I want to give the Veritasium community the tools to deal with the uh, for themselves, because it's actually very, very simple. Um, when you come across entities that allege that uh, Veritasium is a scam or whatever nonsense is spread, um, simply apply basic tenets of business. It works very well. Just a minute, I'll show you. So, think of um, token offerings, or if you must call them ICOs, ICOs, as what they should be, businesses. Don't think of them as some super new high-tech investment. Don't think of it as uh, dreams. Think of them as businesses because they should be businesses. Now, they're businesses with various and often cutting-edge business models, sometimes non-existent business models, but they're businesses nonetheless. So what makes a good business? Let's go down um, what I propose or I allege makes a good business Hence, a good business investment, if you're looking in terms of investment, what makes a good business vendor, if you're looking to buy things from this business, what makes a good business partner, if you rely on this business to further your own business or livelihood. Number one, take a look at the management team, okay? Has the management team performed in the past? Have they executed? Have they succeeded in doing something like this or something similar previously? Okay, you can look at Veritasium. Um, I am the founder of Veritasium. I have a, a strong track record in terms of investment analysis, fundamental analysis, picking trends, whether a macro, global macro, um, technology, or fundamental, okay? Even quantitative at times, and that's not my strong point. I have surrounded myself with others. My chief technology officer is no longer with us, but he has a strong, or had a very strong um, history in software engineering development and a lot of big names. And he's also, or was, a, is also an intellectual property attorney. Okay, take a look at who we have currently. Our lead financial analyst has been with me for 10 years. And he's the one who assisted calling many, many um, you know, booms and busts, Bear Stearns, Lehman Brothers, Journal Growth Properties, Apple, very recently, quite a few calls, even the cryptocurrency calls, okay? If you take a look at our lead um, software developer and software engineer, he's been with us for um, about a two years, year and a half, two years, okay? Um, he's definitely not a public personality, as is my financial analyst, but he's very, very good. You can actually look them in, look at his work. Now, most importantly, when you talk about uh, management, see if they have gained traction in what they're currently doing, okay? We had our coin offering April 25th. I picked that because that was my father's birthday, okay? We ended it April 26th and we extended it for one day. From, I'm sorry, to May 26th and we extended it one day to May 27th. From May 27th on, okay, we offered research which is available immediately right one of a kind research and we'll get back to that we'll get back to that in a few minutes but this research is actually valuation research not simply uh technological opinion okay we've offered we've landed a memorandum of understanding 
with the Jamaican Stock Exchange to build out a bleeding edge, one of a kind digital asset exchange that currently does not exist. Okay? If you understand the business culture in the Caribbean, a memorandum of understanding once signed is very, very strong. Okay? Very different from many other business cultures. Okay? They are 100% behind me, ready to go. They're waiting for us to put, you know, finish up the code, put it in. We are in negotiations. Now, the memorandum of understanding with Jamaica, we actually published. I posted pictures of uh, meetings with the Jamaica Stock Exchange, Chairman of the Board, Managing Director. I posted the actual signed contract. I even posted the meetings that it took to get to where we're going with that. More on that later as well, because that's part of analyzing the competency of management. So just hold on, we'll get back to that. We are also in negotiation with the top 10 exchange. Now we can't take that as fact, or you can't take that as fact, because I haven't named them yet. And the reason I haven't named them is common business courtesy, of course, and the deal hasn't, signed, hasn't been signed yet. So it's always a possibility it may fall through. If it doesn't, we still have many, many other partners to go for. But they're very excited as well. And we're in negotiation with several different large funds. Each fund is over $13, $14 billion. Okay, some are over $20 billion. All these funds are looking to do business with our structured products. Okay? Very, very interesting. Those are not signed deals as, as of yet as well. So they can always fall through. But it is August 6th, if I'm not mistaken, or somewhere around there. August 6th, August 7th. Saturday, whatever day it is, okay? <laughs> August 6th, pardon me. The, I, the um, offering ended May 27th. So from May 27th to August 6th, that's a lot of traction. A lot of traction. Proven traction. Okay? Compare that to many, many token offerings. Veritasium is strong. If I don't believe in using the word scam and fraud and condiment, you know, very, very unprofessional, very, very negative, unless you actually feel that's the case. Okay? For an entity that publishes this st stuff, you know, unprecedented. Very, very few entities will actually publish a contract. I purposely got permission from the Jamaica Stock Exchange to publish it because I want to show actual true contract, uh, actually, actual and true traction in an industry that does not display much of it. Now, back to management. Does management show the wherewithal and the connections politically to get the job done? You can see where I've taken pictures and discussing with negotiations with the Jamaican government, with the ministers of transportation and finance. We've uh, looking to go back to discuss certain things with the entire par parliament. No deal solidified, but I'm building the bridges there. Does management have connections with regulatory authorities? You know, if you're in a financial field, that helps. As a matter of fact, if you're in any field that has um, a decent regulatory oversight, it helps, right? Part and parcel of the article that I published with the Jamaica Stock Exchange, I actually told a story, a pictorial story, where we had to go and discuss things and explain exactly what we're doing to the Bank of Jamaica, which is Jamaican Central Bank. Did the same thing with the FSC, the Financial Services, uh, FSA, I'm sorry, the Financial Services Authority, which is Jamaica's version of the SEC, the Financial Regulatory Authority. Okay, I sat down directly with the chairs and the uh, governor, assistant governors told my story. I even went so far as to give a two and a half to three hour presentation where I went through the entire groundwork of not just what we're doing and the products that we're offering, but how the landscape is changing. I attempted to give a true education. I recorded that, several hours of which, and posted two videos. Does management have relationships, regulatory, political? Do they have traction? Have they delivered? Compare that with practically any other token offering, not just within um, our token offering area, but anywhere else. So let's move forward, okay? Does management have any technology? We had a product that was opening, open in beta from two, December 2013 all the way up to last year, which we decided to pull because of the CFTC's um, announcement that they where the regulatory body that super oversaw Bitcoin. Then we had some Dodd-Frank issues with SEF, et cetera, technical babble stuff. But if you're interested, simply look at Dodd-Frank, okay, and see where it applies. 
We voluntarily pulled it before we got a letter from the SEC. Okay, but significant coal base, significant amount of capital went in. Okay, at least a half million dollars worth of development uh, resources went in over several years with four and five developers consistently over that period of time, between three and six developers, but average about four or five over that entire period of time. Plus, plus significant financial and analytical financial engineering work went into it, plus significant investment strategy. You see what a lot of, um, I think, the FUD distributors don't seem to understand is that we are much, much more than a software company. Financial analysis and financial engineering is a significant portion of our business. Not only the product, but the service delivery. Investment analysis, significant portion of our product and service offerings. And software engineering and development as well. No, we're not a bunch of devs. No, devs don't lead this organization or this development or this venture. Devs are an integral, are integral, part, integral part of the software development as are the financial analysts, as are the financial engineers, as are the legal staff, as are the strategists. Okay? That brings us to the next question, or the next thing to look for, for a strong business proposal in this space. Is there diversity and depth of management? And the team, not just management and the team, there is a difference. Software engineers, financial engineers, financial analysts, software developers, business leaders, um, global macroeconomic strategists, intellectual property attorneys. We have depth, much more on the software development and engineers. Think about that. Make sure you take that litmus paper test and pass it to every other coin offering that you see. Next on the list, if you have extant technology or written code, which you have a you know, significant amount, we do, okay? And by the way, I'm gonna release the old um, code to select users who haven't used it before because I'm eliciting um, and soliciting, I'm soliciting feedback for the next generation, which are going to be, will be significantly more robust because it's going to be written on a f uh, platform with a full Turing scripting language, which is Ethereum and or anything else we will go for. So if you have extant code base in our technology, can you protect it? You must ask that question, right? Do you have technology? Is the technology protectable? If so, is it defensible? Do you have patents on said technology? If not patents, do you have patent applications? Considering how aggressive the space is getting, are these patent applications of significantly early priority date? Okay, very, very important. Okay, do they step on prior art or does prior art step on them? You know, Veritasium claims, and I've put out uh, written proof from our analysts who did the research that we have m multiple patent applications dating early 2014, okay, and we've actually done the work where we searched for patent applications from 2008, which is one year before Satoshi's white paper, up until December 2016, or 15, 16, I can't remember, but decent span. If you look at the, fin um, if you download the um, pathogenic finance report, starting at a page about 18, you get to see the whole spiel relatively strongly positioned. So before you go and start uh, analyzing ISOs in its totality, take a look at the extent or the existence of technology or assets, intellectual assets, and look at the ability to protect these assets in terms of intellectual property. Patents, patent applications. Moving forward now, you're running a business, remember. So we're just going through management, we're going through uh, IP. The business model is the most important. For this space, the business model is considerably more important than technology or the product because a business model can be expanded by management and morphed by management. A business model that is failing and or a product that is failing can be morphed and massaged by competent management to not only survive for another day, but take off and reign supreme. What is the business model of the offering, token offering, okay? Is the business model sustainable? What are the margins in the model? Are the margins sustainable? Or can you protect the margins? Is the addressable market large? How large is it? Well, we have protectable IP. 
we have a business model with extremely large margins, we can protect the margins, primarily because our major competitors, which are right now prime brokerage desk and investment banks, or competitors to be because they're not quite in the space yet, they have a structural deficiency of 60% of gross revenues going to compensation. I can articulate that clearly and plainly. Can other token offerings do that? If the answer is yes, you mark a big green check box. If the answer is no, big red check box. As a matter of fact, if the answer is no, it's looking extremely negative. Notice how most of the FUD articles that are written don't address actual business items, which is interesting because you're addressing an actual business. Even if it's a platform, that platform is designed to generate value and grow, it is a business. You have two types of token offerings. You have entity tokens, entity, and you have platform tokens. Okay, Both intend to survive by generating economic value. So these things, these questions have to be answered. So you went through margins, you went through business models. Are they generating revenue? Yes, no. If so, are they generating profits? Yes, no. Then we have the margin question that comes into play. Are they reporting revenues and profits? Yes or no? Practically nobody is. I announced that starting first quarter of next year, possibly second quarter, but hope most likely first quarter of next year, we will start reporting as if we were a publicly listed trade, um, company, which we're definitely not, and I'm not alleging that we are. We're doing this for transparency, to show it's a real deal, okay? We'll use gap reporting standards, okay? It won't be quite as uh, verbose as the SEC requirement because we, you know, there's no SEC requirement for us, at least not as of right now. But it will be above and beyond everything you see in the private market, definitely above and beyond everything you see in the crypto space. Why? We're not really in the crypto space, okay? Our competitors are, for right now, the big investment banks and the boutique banks who don't add value, requisite value, who are economic rent seekers. Moving forward now, okay, we went through business, profit models, etc. Okay, ask these questions, okay? Think about it. Each and every one of these questions have a direct correlation to success in a business. Each and every one. Now, there are other things that were brought up, okay, and they may or may not be valid. For instance, um, there are complaints about uh, the Veritasium website, okay? We didn't put a lot of energy into the website. The reason? We're busy creating and prosecuting patents. We're busy creating unique and protectable IP. We're busy doing business, making money. We're busy locking down ex exclusive relationships with ex existing securities exchanges, okay? small and strategic areas like the Caribbean. Imagine if they were to drop their taxes to zero for outside capital coming in. You talk about Grand Cayman times 40. With large multi-trillion dollar exchanges, one of the top 10 that we're discussing, we just won, we're going after others as well, but we're negotiating with just one, okay? We're doing medical practices. We have a client that just came in, tokenizing, veritizing their medical practice, uh, their healthcare business. We're also dealing with sovereign entities, the actual entity themselves, creating new asset classes, okay? Um, distressed asset classes, distressed credit classes. Interesting stuff, but most of all, we're working. So we're not rebuilding websites. Take a look at all the other businesses and take a look at the correlation, especially institutional finance business businesses. Take a look at the correlation of the website's aesthetic appeal to computer developers versus the success of the business. Look at that correlation and then look at the correlation of revenues to the success of the businesses. Look at the correlation of profits to the success of the businesses, of margins to the success of the businesses, addressable market, growth, traction, regulatory um, connections or regulatory um, communication ability, political communication ability. Again, if you go to the article that I posted, Rio de Jamaica, we're doing this with several other countries as well. Another point that was brought up, Veritasium has no white paper. Yes, we do not have a white paper. We don't do white papers, we do business. Veritasium does have business, and I've been out of my way to post the first piece of traction that came literally days or weeks after the ICO ended. We also had a um, product that was built out. Now, if you're really, really fascinated in white papers, 
I ask you, be empirical. Take a look at the correlation of a white paper to the success of a business. Okay, look at the white paper that Google published. <laughs> I don't remember seeing one. Okay, look at the white paper that Facebook published. Must have spit my mind. Okay, look at Goldman Sachs' white paper. Where is it, over there? No, okay, Morgan Stanley's white paper. I'm at a loss. Citibank's white paper. Uh, but we have a lot of so-called professionals who are going up to the Veritasium GitHub, but they're saying they don't see any coal, except for one small piece of commodity gold, they say. And so hence, Veritasium has no um, intellectual property in terms of computer coal. Strange, I just explained that we had stuff running since December 2013, right? We have two patents totaling considerably over 130 pages, patent applications, my apologies. So the 130 pages can easily supersede a white paper, but I don't want to draw attention to patent applications because I don't want to invite people to go and cause those issues with them. But if you use your mind, think about it. Now, if none of our competitors have a white paper, right? and we don't see a need for a white paper, and we have extensive filings with extensive intellectual property um, discussions, right, and descriptions, why would we file, why would we produce a white paper again? The cryptocurrency digital asset industry needs to grow. It needs to grow into real businesses and not the games that are played. It's my opinion. Now you also go up, and let's discuss this GitHub thing. Well, the reason why you don't see any code in GitHub, despite the fact we had applications running and relatively complex applications running in the wild for so, some time, should be obvious to anybody who understands how GitHub works. It is a private GitHub. You need a password to get in. You should be able to figure that out. If that's confusing to you, just take a look at our competitors. Go to Morgan Stanley's GitHub. Type in github.com slash Morgan Stanley. What do you see? There's nothing in this GitHub because everything is behind the private firewall. Password. Go to Citibank's GitHub. Same thing, right? Go to JP Morgan's GitHub. Same thing. Actually, I think Goldman Sachs might have something, some open source stuff having to do with uh, Java. Nothing to do with their business directly. So. None of the competitors who currently lead the world, Goldman Sachs, one of the most influential financial institutions in history, okay, their competitors, almost equally so, none of them have white papers, none of them have open GitHubs, but somehow it is expected that because Veritasium doesn't have one, Veritasium is a scam. What that is is ignorance, okay? And everybody who, you know, doubts this, go take a look at the big banks. Next up. So we went through the GitHub issue, we went through the white paper issue, we went through traction, we went through management, we went through um, intellectual property, we went through actual business models. At the end of the day, because I'm, you know, this is starting to become a rather long video, at the end of the day, Veritasium is really, really rocking. I'm proud of our team. I want you as the, a member of the Veritasium community, or even you as a doubter of Veritasium, to compare where we have these green check marks to anybody else. You can take off whatever you want for the website aesthetics. You know, I honestly we do have better things to do, but I'm gonna to get to the website, okay? I will, but we have some pretty important things to take care of. Okay, after we land a trillion dollar deal, we'll go and put little widgets on the website to make sure everybody's happy with that. But to date, not a single, single um, prospect of note has come through the website from an institutional perspective, okay? So we go where the money is for right now. Now, two other aspects before I go, and I'll go wind it up. Um, for some reason, um, I guess the same people who feel that there is no code in the GitHub because they don't have the password to get in, also feel that there's no development team. So we have the lead developer sitting on the website. He is the lead developer. He manages the developers. Below him are, guess what? The developers, and no, they're not listed on the website, okay? We're looking to build out the team. Currently, we have one, two, three developers and engineers whatsoever, and we have a uh, scrum manager who's looking after them, and I'm looking to hire one, possibly two more. For right now, I don't want a team larger than that. Now, back to the diversity of management, right? Diversity of the team. 
why are people asking me about the developers but not asking me about business development guys, biz dev guys? Why aren't they asking about the analytical team? By the way, we have the lead financial analyst, okay? Below him are the analysts. Two analysts, one manager, okay? We have three biz dev people going and I'm serving the roles biz dev as well, so that would be four altogether. Diverse team, our biz dev people are strong. We have one who's politically strong, very strong politics. We have uh, another, actually, um, who is very strong in the healthcare field from an experience perspective and success, and success perspective. We have one who's very strong in international finance and connections. We have one who's very, very strong in local finance. And when I say local, look where I am, this is New York. Okay, very, very strong. I'm not going to bother to name them, hims and hers, but name brands, you know, complete people that literally name brands three, four decades in the industry. You know, we're pretty strong. I'm very proud of the team. The reason why you always see me is because I'm the spokesperson, I'm the founder, I'm the one that speaks. Not everybody's um, the type to get in front of the camera and talk, particularly take a lot of nonsense that comes back after you spoke. So I'll take the fluff, I'll do all the uh, uh, speaking. I act loquacious at times, sometimes I am. So these are the tools that the Veritasium community can take and go and defend themselves against the FUD ruckers or cut them off at the pass. It's called real business. Au revoir.